In this video, I want to provide some intuition as to why fixed effects and first differences estimators actually provide a much better estimate of parameter values than pooled OLS in general. So the example which I'm going to be considering here is I'm interested in the determinants of crime in a city I at a time period T. And I think that crime in a city I at time period T depends somewhat on some city specific characteristics which don't change through time. And it depends on, let's say, the unemployment rate in city I at time period T, plus some other factors which also vary both through city and across time. And the idea here is that we expect that beta is greater than zero, because if the unemployment rate is higher, that tends to be associated with a higher crime rate. So how does pooled OLS go about thinking about the situation? Well, what pooled OLS does is it says, let's just lump all our observations together, and then let's just estimate the model as if it's just one big pooled cross-section. So the idea is we might have some observations which look something like this. So we have perhaps for three cities at two different points in time, we have observations. So we have these six observations which have indicated here. And what pooled OLS does is it says, well, let's just treat all these observations as if it's one big cross-section, and let's, let's then fit a line of best fit here. And the line which pooled OLS would fit would look something like this. But notice that here, what pooled OLS would output is it would output a value of beta which was less than zero. And importantly, this is completely nonsensical. That says that if the unemployment rate increases, then there tends to be a decrease in the crime rate. And we know in practice that that's hardly ever the case. So what's going on here and why does pooled OLS actually give such a stupid estimate? Well, if we look at what fixed effects and first differences do, it's essentially what both of these estimators do is they actually think about observations from different cities as being different. So in first differences, essentially what happens is you regress the first difference of the crime rate in city I at time period T on the first difference of the unemployment rate in city I at time period T plus the first difference of the error UIT. And notice that we have removed the unobserved heterogeneity term, the alpha i. Okay, but implicit in this scheme is the fact that we should treat observations from different cities differently, because essentially we're still saying, let's consider within a city what has been the difference of the crime rate between this period and the last period. So essentially what first differences does, as well as fixed effects, is it says, well, let's look at the observations across time within a specific city. So these top two observations here might actually correspond to London. And the bottom observation might be London in the year 2000, and the top one might be London in the year 2010. And these two observations here might correspond to a different city. They might correspond to Bristol. And they correspond to, to Bristol in the year 2000 and Bristol in the year 2010. And then finally, these last two observations might correspond to, let's say, um, Brighton, and they might correspond to Brighton in the year 2000 and the year 2010 again. And notice that because we've removed this alpha i term here, as well as we do in fixed effects, essentially what fixed effects and first differences say is let's disregard the fact that there are differences in sort of average level levels of crime rate between these three cities. And let's assume that they are all due to city-specific characteristics which don't change through time. And that seems like a much more sensible idea than proceeding as pooled OLS does, as actually neglecting these city-specific characteristics which don't change through time. So what First Differences does is it essentially says, well, let's consider each of these pairs of observations and let's try and fit a line of best fits of these pairs of observations. So for the first pair of observations, we might fit a line which looks something like that. For the Bristol case, we might fit a, a line which looks like that. And for the Brighton case, we'd also fit a line, which is also up for sloping. So notice that in each of these three circumstances, we would find, or we, we would conclude rather, that beta is greater than zero. And hence beta on average across each of the three cases would be greater than zero. And hence we would actually understand, or we would conclude rather, that unemployment or increases in unemployment tend to be associated with increases in the crime rate. So that's the first difference case. What about the fixed effects case? 
Well, the fixed effects case is a little bit more diff difficult because of the fact that the fixed effects regression is a little bit more complicated, but not much more. The idea is that you regress the time demeaned crime rate, so that's the crime rate in city I at time period T, on the time averaged level of crime rate on the time averaged or time demeaned rather level of unemployment rate. So that's the unemployment rate in city I at time period T minus the unemployment rate averaged across time, plus some sort of time demeaned error, u tilde it. And essentially, because we're only dealing with two periods here, essentially what fixed effects is doing is it's saying, let's mark on each of these, or in each of these pairs, let's mark on there the average level of crime rate and the average level of unemployment rate. And in each of these cases is actually gonna to correspond to the middle of these these lines which I've drawn, which draw, uh, which actually connect the two points. And then what fixed effects does is it essentially says, draw a line which goes through this point, which is in the center here, and also passes as near to the other two points as possible. And actually, you can see in this case that a fixed effects is actually gonna be exactly equivalent to first differences, because essentially we're only dealing with two time periods. This point is gonna lie exactly in the middle of this line bisecting the two points, and hence, when I try and, draw, try and draw a line which actually gets as close to these three points as possible, it's actually going to correspond exactly to that of the first differences case. And hence, just like the first differences case, we are going to conclude that beta is greater than zero. In other words, unemployment rate increases tend to increase the crime rate. So notice that in both fixed effects and first differences, we have done away with the unobserved heterogeneity term. And by doing away with this unobserved heterogeneity term, that has allowed us to actually get estimates of parameters which are much better than that which we would have obtained by using Ford OLS alone.